Today, let's journey into the ancient world and uncover the secrets of nature's longest living creatures. From the bowhead whale to Ming the clam, let's discover the exceptional ages of organisms that have survived and thrived for centuries. Let's also look at the implications of their longevity for our understanding of our own aging and why we need to protect them from the threats posed by human activity. So, human beings relatively short-lived creatures, though we live an eternity compared to a fruit fly at least of 3,000 times longer, we don't hold a candle to a bowhead whale which can live over 200 years. And this is to say nothing of the plant kingdom, where typical lifespans stretch from centuries to millennia. And yet, even the trees are young by geological timescales. As we'll soon see, there are organisms still living on Earth that mark their beginnings from the end of the last ice age. They say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Just ask Ming the Clam, an example of Arctica islandica, more commonly referred to as an ocean quahog, which lived for 507 years until it was inadvertently killed in 2006 when researchers placed it in a freezer for further study. Had the scientists at Bangor University in Wales known more about the hapless invertebrate when it was dredged up off the northern coast of Iceland in 2006, they surely uh, would not have done this. Yet Ming's untimely timely death has provided scientists with exciting new opportunities to study the effects of advanced aging in mollusks. Ming hatched during the time of Queen Elizabeth I in Shakespeare, just seven years after the arrival of Christopher Columbus's expedition to the New World. It eventually grew to 8.6 centimeters, that 3.4 inches in length, and developed a series of over 500 layers in its shell, which is how researchers were able to date its birth so precisely. We say it because although Ming did have a biological sex at one time, the feature of its anatomy had been spent by the time scientists found it, and uh, they were never able to determine its sex. Ming's death, though tragic, did lead to a paper in the Journals of Gerontology in which Professor Zoltan Ungvari et al. argued that the mollusk's extreme age was thanks to its genetic resistance to oxidative stress. Ming had a unique ability to limit cellular damage caused by exposure to free radicals, electronically charged particles containing oxygen in its blood, uh, which has given scientists strong evidence that this is the primary cause of aging in humans and other animals, and not, as was once believed, a biological clock which limits our natural lives. The waters off the coast of Iceland seem to be something of a bit of a hotbed or maybe a cold bed for extremely long-lived creatures. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> it's a terrible pun. Swimming near Ming in the icy depths of the Arctic are schools of the world's oldest living vertebrates. The Greenland shark, first recognized by researchers in 1952 as a particularly long-living creature, continues to grow throughout its long life. Researchers discovered in 2016, based on a study of 28 living specimens tagged and tracked for as long as 80 years, that the Greenland shark reaches sexual maturity at a stunning 150 years of age. Radiocarbon dating of crystals within the lenses of the shark's eyes reveal that the oldest among the caught specimens was between 272 and 512 years old. That makes this shark at least older than the United States, with the possibility that it's older than Queen Elizabeth I. Researchers now believe that one of the keys to the Greenland shark's longevity is the unusual way that it bears its young, hatching them alive inside their uteruses. In contrast, most sharks deposit fertilized eggs in the mud on the sea floor. This limits the number of pups per litter to only about 10, gestated for as long as 18 years. The shark's extremely long lifespan is partly due to the need to breed between 20 and 70 times during their lives to produce the best chance of species survival. Another factor seems to be their blood's hemoglobin, which displays an unusual resistance to oxygen, helping the sharks to live on less oxygen at much greater water depths than temperate sharks, and enhancing their lifespans accordingly. Because they grow throughout their lives, the largest specimens are over a thousand kilograms. That's 2,200 pounds and up to 7.3 meters or 24 feet long. Most living examples are smaller than this, weighing less than 400 kilograms, 880 
pounds. Despite its extreme age, there is still a lot we don't know about the Greenland shark. Researchers have been surprised to discover specimens of either Greenland sharks or Greenland slash Pacific sleeper hybrids as far from their native waters as Belize and the Gulf of Mexico. This suggests that these massive creatures may be more spread out and more common than once thought, going unnoticed because they tended to live at low depths. For generations, the Greenland shark was hunted for its liver oil and was later viewed as a nuisance species by fisheries in the North Atlantic who sought to reduce the population. Today, the Greenland shark is threatened by climate change and fishing, which claims over 3,500 Greenland sharks annually. Greenland sharks are not the only ancient organisms now threatened by human encroachments. Recently, efforts by officials of the Inyo National Forest to hide the location of the world's oldest living tree, a 4,852-year-old bristlecone pine named Methuselah, have been frustrated by social media clout chasers who have publicized its exact location in... <laughs> well, it's in the script, but I'm not going to mention it because isn't that the point we're trying to make? <laughs> In this area, which I'm not going to name, some bristlecone pines boast ages of over 4,000 years, with Methuselah being the oldest known example. Genetic studies of the area's bristlecone pines show that some of the surviving trees trace their ancestry back to a single individual that lived over 9,000 years ago, just as the receding glaciers of the last ice age uncovered the area. The rocky, barren geology of the region has discouraged younger competitors from growing around and smothering the ancient trees, as you usually occurs in thickly wooded areas where old growth lives no more than four or five centuries. It's also believed that the rocky and barren terrain has protected this population of bristle cones from periodic forest fires, preserving the oldest specimens. Methuselah was first identified in National Geographic in 1958 when core samples revealed its incredible age. Other trees that the Forest Service cut down before the 1950s are known to have been even older still, with examples at least 5,200 years old. The practice of dendrochronology, which the U.S. Forest Service once used to date the oldest trees, requires that the trees be cut down to date them, and has since, thankfully, been abandoned. We once believed that the California redwoods, the tallest trees in the world, were also the oldest due to their unbelievable size of up to 64 meters or 209 feet and 30 meters or 97 feet in circumference. However, superannuated redwoods like Yosemite's grizzly giant, 2,995 years old, continue to grow until they can no longer support their own weight, limiting their lifespans to probably around 3,000 years. Bristlecone pines, on the other hand, grow slowly and tend to spread out at their base over time, ensuring their longevity as long as there is room for roots to expand. Their relative uselessness as a source of wood has also ensured their survival, which cannot be said for the magnificent American chestnut, which was logged to near extinction in the 18th and 19th centuries. Yet the bristlecone might not have always been the king of trees. The American chestnut, which is similarly slow-growing and stalky, may have been the oldest tree in the world. Known examples have been aged at over 4,000 years, but no living American chestnut approaches this age. Most that survived logging died of chestnut blight, a disease inadvertently imported via Chinese chestnuts which devastated the American chestnut population in the early 20th century. The tragic loss of these behemoth trees reminds us of our continuing duty to learn from the destructive mistakes of the past and preserve ancient trees for future generations. When we imagine ancient organisms, we usually picture a single tree or an animal. However, some organisms don't follow the life cycle of a typical plant or animal. These clonal plants and fungal colonies are individual organisms and a series of individuals, all sharing the same genetic code. What makes them one organism is the preservation of this unique code from one generation to the next. An enormous colony of seagrass, or Neptune grass, was discovered in 2006 off the southern coast of Ibiza in Spain. These clonal colonies play a crucial role in absorbing atmospheric carbon. One strand of this Neptune grass measures over 8 kilometers, and it's believed to have been growing for, wait for it, over 100,000 years. The theoretical limit to the clonal colony's age is the geological age of the modern Mediterranean itself, which has probably been capable of hosting the plant since at least 200,000 years ago, when modern humans were still first spreading into Europe during the previous interglacial period. This warming period occurred between 200,000 and 120,000 years ago, followed by the most recent period of glaciation, which lasted until about 12,000 years ago. As ice sheets receded for eons only to return for yet more 
Orient and then a recede again, and as waves of humans set out from Africa to conquer Europe and much of the rest of the world, this colony of grass was probably just alive and well. This should put the scale of human history into perspective compared uh, with the living world and geological. <laughs> As the character of Ian Malcolm said in Jurassic Park, Life, uh, finds a way. Our next ancient wanderers survived on Faloof Jalet. I'm sorry, Norwegians. <laughs> what word is this? On the Swedish side of the border with Norway, I'm sorry, Sweden. It's a Swedish word. Since before the Vikings first cleared the forests of the lower Nordic peninsula. The Norway spruce, called Old Jiko, may seem young based on dendrochronology because its trunk is only about 400 years old. But Old Chico, like the Neptune grass of the Mediterranean, is a clonal tree with a root system that has been in place for 9,550 years. Like the Neptune grass and the father tree of Methuselah, Old Chico's age is really only limited by the land's ability to sustain life. This tree was among the first hardy colonists who grew in the shadow of the receding ice sheets at the end of the last ice age. Chico grows a new trunk and branches about every 600 years and may sometimes produce more than one when heavy snows push its lower limbs into the earth where they can lay down roots and grow their own trunks in a process called layering. Other trees like coast redwoods and western red cedars also reproduce by layering. For millennia, Old Chico would have appeared as little more than a stunted shrub. It only began to grow into a full-sized tree during the 20th century. A development Professor Lisa Oberg of Sweden's Mayer University chalks up to global warming. Chazzy Reef as we've learned, defining the most ancient organisms on Earth is a tricky business. What really constitutes an organism? Is it DNA? Is it an individual body or the stalk of a tree? Or is it something more than this? Any inclusive list of the most incredible ancient living things must somehow acknowledge the world's magnificent coral reefs. Living shallow water ecosystems that are large enough to be viewed from space and have existed long before the dinosaurs. Living coral reefs today are an amalgam of fossils and living animals, some of which are tens of thousands of years old. Corals, sedentary sea animals that form into enormous colonies in the shallow seas of the Gulf of Mexico, Southeast Asia, East Africa, the Pacific, and the Red Sea, are most closely related to sea anemones. These distant relations to jellyfish have shaped the ecosystem of the Earth's seas since at least 480 million years ago, during the time when animals first emerged. During this period, invertebrates like mollusks, shellfish, dominated the oceans, and the first true fish began to appear. It was a time when life was exploding underwater but the land remained barren and dead. Corals themselves lived for only about 5,000 years, but evolving as they did during a time when the oceans were rich with calcium compounds, they form hard exoskeletons in warm and shallow waters, which over time form enormous reefs out of the hardened, dead fossils of many generations. Though they inhabit just 0.1% of the world's oceans, about the same area as France, by the way, they are home to over 25% of marine species, who find corals a rich source of nutrients and a safe place from predators. 480 million years ago, the continents of the world formed one continuous landmass called Pangaea. It was in a shallow tropical sea on the coast of this continent that Chazzy Reef was formed, on what is now the remote isle of Le Mart in Lake Champlain near Vermont's border with Canada. Over eons, as the continent split apart and formed new coasts, Chazzy Reef rose out of the sea, carried inland hundreds of kilometers, then was buried hundreds of meters under sediment and rock. During the last ice age, towering glaciers scoured the landscape of North America, carving out great lakes and uncovering the incredible fossil of the world's oldest known coral reef. Though long dead, Chazzy Reef is a glimpse into the world's impossibly distant past, a time when the first fish were still evolving.